Hello and welcome to The Run. My name is Maureen Menon Wezigwe. It is no news that Bola Ahmed Tinubu has been declared winner of the 2023 presidential election. INEC declared ruling party candidate Bola Tinubu the winner of Nigeria's presidential election early Wednesday, with the two leading opposition candidates already demanding a revolt in Africa's most populous nation. The news has been received with various mixed reactions, with protests emerging from various parts of the country. The overnight announcement was likely to lead to a court challenge by his main opponents, Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obi. Abubakar also finished second in the last vote in 2019, then appealed those result before his lawsuit ultimately was dismissed. Dissatisfaction has been expressed by Nigerians as well as opposing political parties especially regarding the inability of INEC to upload results in real time with the Beavers' uh, other regularities experienced in the election process. The question now is, what next? Today on the run-up, we will be looking at litigations from opposing parties, challenges and expectations from the president-elect. Well, joining us to discuss this is... A well, uh, we hope to have the Lagos State, uh, one of the candidates for the Lagos State governorship elections, that's uh, uh, Jandor of the PDP. He'll be joining us in the course of the program. But right now, I have a legal practitioner with me uh, in the person of Johnson Argo. Johnson, it's good to have you with us. It's my pleasure. All right. Before the presidential election, um, one of the postulations was the likelihood of a run-up. Yes. You know, a run-up hinged on the assumption that none of the 18 candidates will meet the two conditions needed for a winner to emerge. Um, right. I set out in Section 134, Subsection 2 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. Well, the highest vote cast and secure at least 25% cast, uh, votes cast in each of the 24 states and the FCT. Is that what happened? Oh, it's pretty obvious that um, the person declared as the winner did not score 25% of the votes cast in FCT. In fact, INEC results show that he scored about 17 or 19 percent, way, way below. So what's the implication of that? Oh, my personal opinion, I do not know what the cause will hold if this issue gets to the court. But currently, every action that happens in the site is subject to commentary by members of the site. So I am commenting on the basis that I'm a member of the site, and what has happened affects me directly. So my interpretation of what has happened is that there has been non-compliance with the constitutional provisions. And when we ask, why exactly do we need to make FCT look special? What is special about FCT? Why must somebody have 25% of the votes cast in FCT? Which, in my view, is actually a middle position in the possible interpretations of that section. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me start this way. There are three possible interpretations to that section. The first interpretation is that the person who gets the majority of the votes cast mm -hmm. must, in addition, score 25% uh, 25 in 24 of the participants states plus winning the FCT. That's 25% of the FCT. I'm coming to that. 25% mm. of 24 states of, out of 36 of the Federation, mm -hmm. that is the uh, plus winning the FCT. That's first extreme interpretation. Middle course interpretation, which seems to be the most popular, is that the winner must win the highest number of votes cast, win 25% in 24 of the 36 states, and win 25% of the votes cast in FCT. That's the middle ground, which appears to be most popular. Mm -hmm. But the one that appears to have been done by INEC is the, win, the winner, uh, declare winner will have to have the highest number of votes cast, win 25 states, that, which calculates FCT or any other, uh, to be the equivalent of any other states. And when I say win 25 states, I mean win 25% in 25 states. Mm -hmm. So in, in which case, it doesn't matter if the person wins 25% in the FCT or not. This is what INEC has interpreted that section to be by declaring Bola Ahmed Tinubu of the APC as the winner of this election despite not obtaining 25% of the votes cast in the FCT. The question then is, is it possible that it's correct or is it possible that it's wrong? Why would the constitution want to place FCT in a, such a special position? Did it intend this so? Yeah, and uh, for uh, did it intend so? And the word and 
Mm. Does that not separate the FCT from the 24 states? Grammatically, it did separate the FCT. Now, what will help us to give that kind of interpretation? Let us look at what exactly did the Constitution intend the FCT to be? It's meant to be the only territory that is owned by all of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Every other state is owned and governed by the governors elected in the various states. Every other state has a legislative assembly. We call the House of Assembly of each of those states. And they make laws for the people in the territory of all of those states. But in the case of the FCT, they do not have a different governor. In fact, the president is their governor. They do not have a different legislature. The National Assembly legislates for the FCT, and it's expected that each time the National Assembly makes a law, the president will have to assent to it ostensibly on behalf of all the people of Nigeria and the FCT. Mm -hmm. So the laws by which they are governed, by the rules by which they are governed, the activities of government which governs them will be happening without their input if the interpretation that F um, INEC has given to this section happens. So that makes me wonder, why would the constitution want them to have an impute in who becomes the president or their governor? I, I said this advisedly. The president is their governor, although he governs through the minister of the FCT. Mm -hmm. He can sack and hire any person as a minister. And therefore, he is actually the, the person exercising the powers of the governor of FCT. Yeah. Now, look at it this way. What exactly is the history of the FCT? By the time the FCT was created in the, early seven, um, in the late 70s, they declared all the human beings who were Aboriginal to FCT, it made it a virgin land, and started the constructions in the FCT. So any other person that has arrived in the FCT arrived just as an immigrant, a, a normal Nigerian. So I, I, everybody have equal stake in the FCT. So it makes sense that it's, it's, it's assumed that the FCT represents everybody represents in Nigeria. It's the, the totality melting of point. Nigeria, the Good. melting point, that's the right phrase. The melting point for everybody in Nigeria. So when we have all arrived, if you get 25% of the votes in FCT, it's expected that you have gotten the sam a, a sample support of all the peoples of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That is one aspect of it. The second aspect is that you are governing from the FCT. The governor can afford to live in another place, but the president is expected to live in the federal capital territory. Mm -hmm. And one should expect him to have the support of the immediate neighbors and residents. Mm -hmm. So if you have 25% of the people who are living in the FCT, it's expected that at least so, to some extent, you have population support. Mm -hmm. on the whole of it if you do not have it, it, it there will be some lack of legitimacy somehow there lack are, of legitimacy it can even be security so, mm -hmm. it can lead to security issues okay. so when you are when the president is passing he's afraid that some group might do something to the president of the country but when the president has secured the support and love because remember the in the democratic process the election is just an endorsement and it's an indication of the people of who they want to exercise the common powers of the people. That is actually what the government is. Okay, so um, not respecting this particular law mm. has some sort of implications on legitimacy and support, you're saying? Of course. If you do not respect the law, look at it this way. The constitution has stated that nobody should assess power in Nigeria unless or nobody should govern Nigeria unless through the process indicated in the constitution. Mm -hmm. So if you have not followed the process indicated by uh, the constitution, one can actually say that there is a question of whether you have conducted a coup. That, that is, what, is deep. Yes. Well, that is a question. So, okay. And that question can be answered in the courts. And that is part of why what is ha going to happen now is very, very important. Obviously, there will be litigations, and yeah. we're expecting to hear more on that. But part of the uh, things that we are also said not to have uh, taken place, or that should have taken place, the mm. bridges, especially on the part of INEC, mm. is the fact that the beavers were not used, the IREV were not used uh, in record time, 
uh, you know, the results were not uploaded in record time as Nigerians were promised. Now, these were um, guidelines birthed by the Electoral Act, which mm. INEC exercised. What's the import of that? Now, those things go to whether uh, the election has been conducted in accordance with the Electoral Act, and in accordance with the conventions expected, and goes into whether the elections are credible, whether the, there should be enough trust in the process, whether the people can believe that they have legitimately expressed consent to be governed by the persons or person declared winner. Now, of course, I must first accept that if a process is exp expressed as what will be done, the people have legitimate expectation to expect that the uh, administrative body or the body is who has said it will follow a particular process, we follow that process. So if the process is not followed, one might call it irregularity, but to what extent can that irregularity be condoned? If it is an irregularity that affects the very root of the process itself, the courts have always said that it shouldn't be condoned, and in, in some cases, reruns have been ordered. So to what extent should that irregularity be condoned in this case? Being that uh, electronic uh, transmission of results was a major part of the guidelines reeled out by the electoral umpire before the elections. Uh, uh, my thinking, this is personal view, my thinking is that it should not be condoned. The reason I say so is that the people of Nigeria would have continued with their normal disenchantment, disregard of the entire process, and all of those. But to build confidence, the electoral body came up to the people and said to the people, no, oh, this time around it's going to be different. I'm going to make sure that the votes in the polling units count, and that if there is any interference, there will be a trail of that interference. And that is the concept of transmitting elections right from the polling units. So if they have not done exactly as they promised, I think there is room to hold them to do as they promised. Because a lot of people will not have spent their days in the queue and under the rain and the shine on Saturday, 25th of February, 2023, if they had any way to believe that it was possible for somebody to alter the will they have expressed. The allegation now is that a lot of people voted, but due to the non-transmission of the results, somebody has had opportunity to change the figures that they have done. And then the question then is, what is actually the impact of that alteration of result? Mm -hmm. People say it is fraud. People say it amounts to rigging. Those who uh, changed it by deception is quite different. Or this almost the same as those who changed it with force. It's akin to what the military guys do. The military guys do not pretend to have your consent to rule you. They rule you on the basis that they have capacity to force you to do as they wish. In, 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 in the same element of force, or is in the same category as when you receive the people's consent by trickery, mm -hmm. or when you steal the people's consent, all of this vitiates consent. Remember what I have said before, that what election is, is an avenue for the person who wants to run the commissionary of government to obtain the consent of the governed. So if it is affected by force, if it is aff affected by trickery, fraud, or misrepresentations, deceit, mm -hmm. that consent is suspect, is questionable, and you do not have right to exercise the power you have obtained by force or consent. If not, uh, 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 justice will not be the case. Yeah, well, the candidates of the other parties mm. have all said they're going to go to court. In fact, mm. we saw all that's played out uh, from the press releases, the press conferences, the call for the cancellation of the entire process yes. and all of that. Now, what should be the basis for filing a petition in this regard? Uh, at the risk of sounding like uh, an advisor to the candidates, because most of them must have, must have their own legal advisors and mm -hmm. they are entitled or they are required to seek le separate legal advice. But for the benefit of the public, I might just point out the fact that First, the election may not have been conducted in compliance with the rules given by INEC, in compliance with the Electoral Acts, and in compliance with the Constitution. Three things. The rules you must transmit to, through BIVAS. 
you did uh, uh, you didn't do that mm -hmm. um, the electoral act says that if there is a conflict between the results that are uh, being announced and uh, let's say if there is an allegation that the result being announced is not the same as done at the polling unit the electoral uh, uh, collecting officer or whatever officer of INEC should compare the results being announced with that which happened at the polling unit by reference to the electronically transmitted results so when these challenges happened on live TV, mm -hmm. INEC did not produce any of those el so-called electronically transmitted because it did not have it. That is the point INEC should have said, hold on, we have missed a step. Mm -hmm. Let's redo it. This is quite separate from whether on the basis of the declared results, the person declared has scored 25% of Abuja. Now, there are also arguments that there are some locations where elections did not take place. And if the number of elect, um, uh, people who would have voted in those polling units were counted, is it equivalent to the number of difference? I mean, the difference between the score of the highest scoring candidate mm -hmm. and the runner, if, if it is the equivalent or if it is less than that, the elections should be declared inconclusive and supplementary elections conducted in those polling units where elections did not happen mm -hmm. or elections were cancelled. Mm -hmm. These are all at first the question whether the person declared as elected has been validly declared in accordance with the Constitution, in accordance with the Electoral Act, and in, in accordance with the guidelines. All right. So, um what legal redress is available to the Nigerian man, the ordinary Nigerian on the street who is crying against this whole process? It's a pity. The Electoral Act has re uh, reserved challenge of electoral outcomes to persons who are parties to the election. It didn't declare me and you who are not candidates in the election as parties to the election. It's expected that it's only people who are candidates or their parties I think when I say parties, I, this time, second time I said I mean political parties. But it's quite unfortunate. Maybe it's a point for further constitutional development because it's quite, for me now uh, as an ordinary person, I find it hard to accept that somebody who scored uh, less than 39 percent of the entire vote cast, mm -hmm. 33 actually, is it 36.6 percent? 36.3% or 4%, that's 6.4% mm -hmm. of the entire vote cast yeah. is declared the winner of an election. It means that 66.6% of the people who cast food rejected the person you have declared winner. And these people do not have any legal standing to it approach the court and say, co we have been cheated. On the basis of the law that we have today, we do not have. Now, I can, uh, if, for example, I wasn't allowed to vote, I can complain that I was an eligible voter, but I wasn't allowed to vote. Maybe that's, since I, it is in my inherent right to participate politically in Nigeria, maybe the court can look at that route. But on the vis basis of existing jurisprudence, the one that the court has been interpreting over yeah. the years, it seems that it is, uh, for the purpose of election petition tribunals, yeah. It seems that it is only candidates or their political parties that can challenge the outcome of electoral results. But my thinking is that there should be inherent in the courts some opportunity for people who were excluded from exercising their political rights, which we consider fundamental, yeah. to complain of that exclusion. And be able to go and do that yes. in the court. Mm. Uh, one of the things we noticed is yes. the, what seemed like a hesitation mm. to uh, approach the court for justice by those who feel cheated, talking about the candidates now, because some people were saying, why not wait for the process to go through? Why not wait for the results to be uh, announced before, and then take the matter to court as the INEC uh, umpire has said you should do? Why are you going, jumping the gun and asking for them to stop collating results or cancel the election before the results are even announced. It would appear, and from the questions asked and answers given, that 
Nigerians do not seem to have so much confidence in the judiciary when it comes to electoral matters. This is your domain. How mm. does that sound? No, now, you? let's look at it this way. I am not going to say that everybody in Nigeria has confidence in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that. But we also know that all the top, let me use the top three candidates in this election have been beneficiaries of judicial um, pronouncements, one way or the other. Starting from the man in um, PDP, he was once asked to vacate his seat for leaving PDP to ACN. It was a court that said he remains the vice president of Nigeria because the constitution did not expect him to vacate. Um, the man in um, APC has also been there from the court's uh, gestures when he had this quarrel with the F FG about seizing local government funds of the Lagos state. The one in Labour Party is, in fact, product of the judiciary. <laughs> he, he won his election. He was rigged out the first time. The court brought him back after three years. He was impeached un wrongfully. A uh, few months after he was brought back, the court brought him back. Just a few months after his impeachment, they conducted an election into his office, which the court said was not vacant. So the court brought him back. So he, 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 it would be difficult to say that the three of them will not have confidence that the judiciary will do some justice. But I cannot, like I said, say that the ordinary people have confidence in the judiciary because of some inconsistent or things that do not look logical that has happened in recent times. But that, be that as it may, at the time they were being asked to go to court, I would have thought that it is premature because the election results have not been made known. So if you go to the election petition tribunal, what are you going to be complaining about? Because the election petition tribunal is the only uh, entity imbued with powers or jurisdiction to entertain questions of the conduct of an election mm -hmm. after the election has commenced. So up until yesterday, the outcome of the results have not been announced. So I would have thought that it is premature to ask a person to present his petition. What, are he, what is he going to be complaining about? I, and of course, before the yesterday, INEC had opportunity or still had powers before yesterday mm -hmm. to say, because of this and this and this, I am redoing this and this and this. Mm -hmm. So it was within the administrative competence of INEC to address some of the complaints they have made. For instance, when the, somebody complains that in so-and-so state, so-and-so polling unit, so-and-so elections did not hold, INEC could have said, oh, we are sorry, hold elections there. Even the entire process, I could have said, oh, we discovered that we did not comply with our guidelines about uploading results on, uh, on the IRF portal through the beavers. Oh, we are going to redo this on social and so dates. Nigerians expected such from INEC, but Nigerians never got that. And it right. took a lot of complaints mm -hmm. uh, before INEC gave out a little speech about the technical glitches they were having. Mm -hmm. As we speak, I tell you, many Nigerians are expecting INEC to apologize, which was why I asked what legal redress is available to the ordinary Nigerian uh, in this matter. But you said we do not have no, any. Uh, my it's our candidates that would apparent. have to go and represent mm. us in yes. court. However, I'm thinking, mm. and let me ask you, because um, the Supreme Court of Nigeria has never, yeah. never overturned a presidential election before. Could this also be a reason why? This there may. is a hesitation to take this to court. No, the, I am saying that the time to even take it to court has not expired. In fact, it, it just started counting. So the, 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 the right of the candidate... Yes, it just started counting, yes. but you would see that there I, seemed to be this reluctance to have the court decide this matter, which may have been the reason why there was a call for either cessation of the coalition or total mm. cancellation of the whole no, process. I, I, cessation of the process and cancellation of the process, we are still within the powers of INEC. So if you can do something here today, why do I have to go and wait for somebody tomorrow to do it? I think that's what the, the candidates are, uh, try to do. You, who is doing wrong, stop doing the wrong. Do you understand the point? Mm -hmm. So you stop, 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 stop if you can, can stop. It is only when you have refused to exercise the powers in you to stop the wrong you are doing that I will now ask a neutral, we assume the judiciary is neutral, to confirm whether you should have done that which you have claimed you could do. And All right, just to hold your thought, yeah. uh, you're still watching the run-up on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back to continue our discussions on the 
process which we are all going through as a nation. Welcome back. You're still watching Run Up on Plus TV Africa. We're taking a look at the just concluded presidential election, the fallout of it, and also we will be touching on the forthcoming governorship election, which will be on the 11th of this month. My guest right now is Mr. Johnson Agu. He's a legal practitioner. Mr. Agu, before we went on that break, we were talking mm -hmm. about the fact that it does appear that the, the, the candidates in the just concluded elections uh, who felt aggrieved mm. because of what they felt were discrepancies, uh, irregularities yeah. uh, that played out. Mm. It does appear that they were reluctant to have the court decide this matter. They would have rather have the people's voice and votes counted yes. instead of the court deciding, which was why they tried to um, put a stop to it yes. or, and demanded for a total cancellation of it. Yeah, I, I explained that I, I wouldn't say that they do not have confidence in the cause, but I think that if you can do something here in Nigeria at, say, the cost of five naira, why do you want to go and do it tomorrow at London at the cost of 100 million? It is costlier to run through the judicial process in terms of time, money, and all of those. And the INEC, at, as at the time they were telling INEC to pause, Mm -hmm. and ponder, had the powers to pause and review itself and know if it is doing as the law empowered it to do. It is only when INEC has failed or refused, as they have now done, that the right of the candidates to go to the court to complain crystallizes. So the courts are there to adjudicate between a person and any other person or authority as to whether the authority or the person has infringed on existing rights or not. Mm -hmm. So until INEC concluded its uh, adjudged um, uh, failed elections, the candidates wouldn't have been able to go to any court, tell the court uh, the elections are bad. It is when the elections turn bad that it has become bad. So as at that time they were asking the uh, INEC to stop, INEC had authority to stop. And it could redress itself at that time. But it did not. But it did not. Which has now given them a right to ask the election petition tribunal to review the conduct of INEC. So I wouldn't take what they did at that time as evidence of lack of confidence in the judiciary. Remember, I do not say that everybody in Nigeria has confidence in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. It is up to the judiciary on this occasion to demonstrate whether everybody in Nigeria should restore confidence in the judicial process. But as far as I know, rumors on the streets, some people are complaining, they do not know if they want to trust the judiciary or not. But this is the chance of the judiciary to see if the judgment they will give will accord with the wishes of almost everybody. When I say everybody, I don't mean the vocal minority. Yeah. Well, at this point, we have a president-elect that has been announced in the person mm. of uh, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu yes. um, of the APC. Yeah. And uh, he has called for calm, he has called for peace, and he's extended the olive uh, you know, branch to the other contestants. ECOWAS has also called for peace because mm. Nigeria is very critical, mm. not just to West Africa, but to the whole of the African continent. We mm. cannot afford, mm. we cannot afford to have anything violent erupt in Nigeria. And is it not instructive to see how calm the youth have become, even though they are crying so loudly, mm. yet you can see the, a sense of maturity in the way they are going about their grievances? Is it not instructive? I think it's a question of the person of the adjudged or of the persons whom the youth say they are following. The person has been saying to people, do not worry, if you have voted for me, I will retrieve the mandate. This is different from what we saw in 2011, where the person um, who claimed he was um, rigged out said if elections have been rigged, people are entitled to be angry. And that led to a lot of killings. So you, in this, on this occasion, you've seen some level of maturity. Yeah. And especially the antecedents of the person that the youth say they are following. He has withdrawn or uh, um, retrieved his mandate from the courts, using the courts before. So that is giving some people a sense of hope that it is possible that it can be done again. And he keeps saying, I have done it before. 
just give me a chance. Let me see if we can do it again. So the people are ostensibly postponing their rage. Who knows? Maybe by the time um, the courts take their final decision, the rage may have dissipated or it may boil over. Nobody has control of what will happen, but the best is for everybody to do according to what the law has said. Okay. And I think the expression of confidence in the judiciary by the vice president of the Labour Party and the PDP mm. yesterday has also helped. You're right. right. Well, the parties now have three weeks to appeal the results. Yes. And um, within that three weeks, they should be able to collate what they call the evidence to show that there have been massive irregularity or irregularities that has led to substantial non-compliance with the electoral laws, the electoral guidance, and the con constitution. Some of them are apparent. For example, the argument that a person who did not win 25% of the votes cast in the FCT should not be president mm -hmm. is quite apparent because on the face of the declared results, someone did not win 25% of the FCT. All right. right. Okay. I've just been informed that the governorship candidate for the People's Democratic Party is joining us at this point. And when I'm done with him, Johnson, we're going to be talking about the governorship election, which will be taking place on the 11th of March. Uh, may I have him, please? Okay, we may have to take a short break and we're back to join uh, the governorship candidate to have him join us uh, for this program. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching the run-up on Plus TV Africa. We've been discussing with a legal practitioner, uh, talking about the presidential election that took place on the 25th of February uh, and all that's come out of all of that. We're also going to be taking a look right now at the forthcoming governorship election, which will be taking place on the 11th of this month. And joining us to discuss that, Abdulaziz Olajide Adediran, popularly known as Jandor, the Lagos State governorship candidate under the People's Democratic Party has joined us right now. You're welcome to the program, Mr. Adeniro. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank yeah, you you're welcome. Me. All right. Well, you have not given any press uh, sta uh, releases since the presidential election, in spite of all that's happened. Some of us were hoping to hear from you. However, uh, the Labour Party candidate uh, for this governorship election did release something yesterday. And part of what he said is that the Labour Party is in talks with the, the real owners of the structures of the PDP. Um, so one of the questions I have for you is this. Are you one of the real owners of the structures of the PDP he's talking about? And is there an alliance in the pipeline? Okay, thank you very much um, for having me. Um, like I said yesterday, what happened on Saturday um, was Nigerians across party lines coming together you know, to make a statement. Um, of course, it played out in the state of Lagos as well. And that shows that the, the voters of these days are now well informed to choose a personality above, you know, party, um, um, political parties, so to speak. Um, so that's actually played out. And um, thereafter, Everybody starts seeing the need for collaboration so as to confront the ruling party, especially the ones that have not done well, like in that of legal states that we have. Um, yes, I can say that there are talks. I don't understand what um, Mr. Rosario meant by true owners of the party. All I know is that People's Democratic Party, nobody owns it, unlike APC, that is owned by an individual that all of us know. Uh, People's Democratic Party, it's a democratic party belonging to the people. If you join the party today, you are on the same pedestal with those that have been there, you know, uh, for over 24 years of his existence. So in this party, we don't have owner or owners, as the case may be. Everybody from world to the national level are 
owners of this party. So I don't know about two owners of this party. But what I know is that the coming election, nobody would expect to have a replica of what played out in the coming election because, for instance, Banki W that lost to a candidate of Labour Party in Ethiopia local government he didn't lose to that guy. He lost to Peter B. Just like everybody that lost Saturday election from either PDP or APC lost to Peter B. Peter B is not going to be on the ballot this Saturday. So if anybody is deluding themselves to think that, oh, I am going to inherit that, you have to first remember that the personality of you and the man who garnered all the votes are quite different. That's number one. Number two is that if you look at voting pattern in the state of Lagos, you will see that majority of these votes are traditional PDP uh, voters. You know, uh, from Lagos, where's where I'm from, uh, you see what played out. Uh, elites also play some role at the center. Why? Why is because people want something else. Okay, and that's what Peter Abu represents. Peter Abu was coming from PDP, you understand, to Labour Party. He left PDP because he felt this thing supposed to go to the southeast, supposed to be micro zone to the southeast. And our presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, also said at that time that if we are going to do zoning, we have to micro zone to either the southeast or the northeast. Those are the two regions that have never produced president in, in this country before. And if you zone to southeast, I will go back home and sit down. But some people within the party who thought they can get it done, so they open it up. And Peter B at that time feel perhaps I don't have the the, the war chest to go into this. Hello. So we have we have um, a similar trajectory because I was coming from APC mm -hmm. where there was issue of Godfatherism in APC and I left. I could also be governor to sit with the place order that we have there now is, is, is governor. But I left to say no, I will do it, you know, um, differently. So when I got into PDP, I put up everything to fight and be able to get the ticket. I won the ticket. And this Godfatherism of the thing want to play out again mm -hmm. with this same Labour Party candidate now. But one man, okay, take I said, no. Let okay. me exercise my constitutional right to pick whoever I want. So that is why we are here, as we speak. So, sort of the election is an election that people of Lagos will look at. Yes, of course, you can, if you are of Labour Party, it's okay for you to keep basking in the euphoria of Peter of Beans for the party. That's fine. Uh, enjoy the moment. But it's going to be a different ball game, March 11th, 2023. Yeah. Yes, I want a situation whereby all of us can come together and form a formidable front to confront the, this hegemony. I started this with Ebonfun Shodwati immediately after our very first debate. That was in January 29th. I approached him. I said, I want us to sit together. I didn't say because I'm of the almighty PDP and ADC is, it doesn't have a structure compared to us. No, I moved. I went to Akin Braceways of NRM. I said the same thing. And let's see how we can, you know, come together and confront this activity. Because I was coming from there, I understand what it is to confront them. So nobody should think, okay, we can do it all by ourselves. But again, if that wouldn't work, just like I put in my closing remarks during the debate, we can then see how we can put our best foot forward. That personality that can win election for us, let us rally around that person. That personality that can defend our votes, even if we decide to give this vote, let us present this person. That personality that can match these people, department for department, let us put that, pe that person forward. Right, so this is my own reaction to issue of whether true owners of PDP or not. But for me, in PDP, we don't have owners. All of us are equal because we are all card carrying members of the party. Is it too early in the day in this discussion with the LP for us to know uh, the nature of this discussion that you're having and how this merger or alliance is going to form? No, I guess, I, 
I beg your pardon? Uh, you Is it too early in the course of your discussion with the Labour Party for us to know the nature of the alliance, how it's going to be formed? No, no our discussion is not just with the Labour Party. There are other political parties. You know, we are ADC, we have NRM, you know, we are SDP. And I mean, yesterday, we we're still in a meeting with SDP and NRM candidates yesterday. ADC couldn't join us. It's not just about Labour Party. It's, it's this whole thing, we're not looking at it like it's about us. It's about the people of Lagos. It's about, so, and people have taken over this conversation from, I mean, this, um, the position of alliance, what we call it from us, at the very top level they are discussing it. And I know when it's time they will come up to follow all of us and tell us the bitter truth and see what you know they believe or all of us will believe is good for, for labor. So we're talking to Labour Party, we're talking to uh, not the original owners. We believe in every member of Labour Party. We're talking to the obedience, we're talking to everybody to see how we can come together. That look, one thing we're able to achieve with what we did last week was just our statements. It is time for us to have our way with this coming election, and we'll have it. All right, you did say that those who voted for the Labour Party actually voted for Peter, be not the party. Uh, there is a level and a sense in which that statement could be true, but what do you say to those who say that the APC and the PDP are twins, neither of whom should be trusted? Okay, so if you want to say that and make it strictly about political party, it shows that Peter Obi himself of a PDP now of Labour Party, Badibo of PDP now of Labour Party. So everybody is on the same, is on the same water. What we're speaking to is that we have to keep analyzing. Of course, people jump to Peter Obi, not Labour Party. Of course, they knew it was coming from PDP, but at that time it doesn't matter. We have seen Peter. We have listened to Peter. We are going with Peter, and that is what you have. You know, so whether it's from PDP or it's from, because even Badibo is from PDP. So if I give PDP today and I say I'm going to zero party, I mean, it's that person that matters. There is nothing in these three letter words, ABC, PDP. It's just, it's just a mere acronyms of, of a political party. It's you and all of that. And everything that we have achieved till today, we have done that. We do appear to be having a you bit understand. of... Okay. So, we're back. Yes. So everything that we have achieved today, we have achieved on our own merit as John Doe. Uh, not jumping on anybody's... You know, it's, it's, it suddenly you just appear from nowhere and want to... It doesn't work that way. I have been to the entire 245 wards in this state, both in the Riverland communities, everywhere. I have been doing this for the past seven years, going to eight years now. We are the one that APC people are running after on the street of Lagos, wanting to kill and attacking every now and then. That is speaking to something because we represent something. Like they know that, that, that that's so. And they are part of this game that, okay, we heard that want, that want to be an alliance. Okay, there are three agendas that that alliance must not work. And if it does work, then that must not be on the main tickets. And they are pumping money with on the influencers to keep pushing the narratives that will make. You know, so we understand this game very well. But this election, this coming election, it's for us to lose. And I believe we'll do everything to win it. Well, having processed all that happened on the 25th of February with the presidential election, uh, and which have birthed lots of fears in you, which is uh, what has led to all these talks about collaborations, alliances, and all of that, uh, how hopeful and confident are you in INEC with regards to uh, the electronic transfer of your results on the 11th of March as we approach that day? No, let, me, let me say this to you, uh, just to correct an impression. The outcome of Saturday election for us didn't bring about any fear, and I must tell you this. And I said this yesterday on, on the national TV. What we thought was that the dark old days were over, you know, with all of these things. But now that INEC has said to us that really what we have in our guidelines, the constitutional provision, is really does not matter, then we'll go into this election prepared. You know, there is nothing that APC did, you know, for this election that we don't even know. 
But we are thought that, oh, the dark days are over, all of us can then begin. I haven't seen, you know, Anambra, Kogi, and, um, I mean, Anambra, Oshun, and Ekiti election. So we thought that, okay, these, these beavers, this trans, uh, transfer of um, um, ele ele election results from the polling units is, is, is the same thing. But now they've been able to say to us that, oh, uh, it might be a So all of us will now go to this poll, prepare. So if you don't understand that, you don't even know what to do. So we are waiting on INEC. We hope and pray okay, they will transmit the result this time. And if they say they will not transmit the results, eh, the result will come out anyhow and the will be announced. Meaning that uh, everybody, as, as, it's going to be a, a rigging spree? Is that what you mean by that? That's not what I mean. Um, I'm saying that since it's going to be manual, we will also prepare for manual and make sure it is done that way. <laughs> but we have taken learnings from what happened Saturday. You understand? But this time, we will never be caught on our way. No. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Abdulaziz Olajida Dediro, also known as John Doe, the Lagos State Governorship candidate uh, under the People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much for your time. I'm wishing you the very best uh, come 11th of March. Thank you very much. Well, you're still watching the roundup. We'll take a quick break to take our news and come back and continue with the discussions. Stay with us. <laughs>